County is now in session. Judge Howard R. Stinning presiding. Be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Carl Hickson, guilty of murder in the first degree. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, your duty was not an easy one. I hereby dismiss you with the gratitude of the people of this state. This court stands adjourned until 10 o'clock Monday morning, at which time the prisoner will hear his sentence. Just keep driving. Sherman Tyler. Very good, Judge. Turn the next driveway. My wife, Your Honor. She was the one doing all the crying at my trial. Quite a place for the freeway. I worked here once washing dishes. Get moving. Well, I thought it was going to be a big deal. The help got leftovers. If you wanted anything decent, you had to steal it. And that wasn't easy. You'll see the cage they locked it in. Come on.
Wake up, Judge. You don't have much time. Wake up! I said wake up! Wake up! Why is he doing this to me? You're wasting time. You're wasting time laying there. You've wasted 20 minutes. You'll know what time means by tomorrow morning. Avis. What? The thing I wrote. I wanted this just right. The jury having found you guilty, it is this court sentence that you'll be executed by using lethal gas and the methods of this state. Two years ago, word for word, now we switch. The finger's on you. Your execution is set for exactly 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. That gives you 13 hours and 32 minutes. What's the matter? You look puzzled. Am I a symbol? Is that it? You want revenge, so I represent the whole legal system? Don't flatter yourself. That has to be it. You've been in and out of institutions since you were 14. The law is no puzzle to you. You know murder during the commission of a felony carries a mandatory death sentence. You know I didn't have any choice, so I must be a symbol. You're you. The guy in the black robe, the guy who said the words. I had to say those words. That's my job. Your job. The Nazis used that bit when they got caught. That was a defense, Judge, remember? We were only following orders. They gassed six million, six million people following those orders. Compare me with them. You ran that trial, and you said the words. You said, Sherm, you go die now. You go up there, and you sit in that cell, and mark that calendar, and think about your woman, and die, and die, and die. I don't make the law. I don't make the sentence. The people do. But you said the words, and you could have passed. It's a dirty, lousy business, Dad, and you could have passed. You bought a gun. You went into a store. You killed a man. If you hadn't done that, I wouldn't have had to say any words. But you did. You told the jury the law. You told them what words to say. All right. Now, I'm saying them to you. I'm saying, judge, you go die now. You sit in there and count the minutes and die, and die, and die. Now, I am going to tell you a little story. Because that's the real point of it, see? Knowing every detail, and then having it happen. And not being able to do a damn thing about it. Once upon a time, there was a guy named Sherm. He lived in death row. Now, this guy, Sherm, he was pretty scared, see? Because he knew that at a certain day, 
At a certain hour, they were going to come for him. Hey, Paco. What time is it? Five. On the nose. Maybe they forgot about me. That's what I think, too. I think they forgot about you. Hey, Paco, you got a picture of a girl? Why? On the movies, a hero always looks at a picture of a girl. I don't want to disappoint all those witnesses. What about Avis? No. That's the wrong guy. I killed my girl, remember? I knew it. I knew they wouldn't forget about me. If you're looking for Sherm Tyler, he's not here. He won't be back till 10 tomorrow morning. How you feeling? I'm okay, Sherm. What's that? Chalk? Why, any rules against chalk down there? I guess not. I always wanted a pair of these. Who had them last? Charlie, the red? The brand new. How long are you, big slob? Bye, my friend. Que Dios te bendiga, mano. What? My God, go with you. Your advice, Professor. The university's gonna get the body. I'm glad, Sherm. Everybody should go to college. Kelly, how about some music? Huh? 
What's that? Me. Want to play some cards? I might beat you out of that hundred bucks you're getting for being here tonight. Well, Sean. How are you making it, Chaplin? I'm fine. How about you, Sean? Well, I got this big appetite here. I didn't expect that. Would you like to pray together? It's never too late if that's what you've been thinking. Prayer helps. Nothing. It does, Sherm. Look, I went to church school once. And the football coach used to say, the prayers work better if the boys are big. You know, that's how I feel. You see, I could get down on my knees and I could say, Lord, where is all that mercy that everybody keeps talking about? You know what? At 10 tomorrow morning, they would still hit me with a cyanide. That much of me is dead already. You ask me how I felt, Chaplain? Well, I feel rotten. I'm scared silly. Sure, I'm take it easy. You take it easy. You take it easy when you spend your lousy blood money. It's wrong. Even if I deserve to die, not like this. Not like this. What time is it? 4.15. Thought you might want some paper. What for? Write to your wife. What could I say to her? She took pills after the trial. She almost died. It's a rotten world. I'll tell you something else, Kelly. It's not even round. I'm sorry. Hey, look. I'm not sorry at you. You've got kids. I'm glad about the hundred bucks. But I just can't stand any more sorries. You're sorry, the warden's sorry, the chaplain's sorry. Everybody is sorry, but nobody, nobody is sorry enough. Give me a cigarette, will you? Sherm. I just talked to the governor. Clemency board denied your petition. And the state Supreme Court voted against your appeal. 
Thanks for the good news. Good morning, Sean. What's so good about it? I figured I'd get enough today. You're not gonna hear that much longer, Doc. What's the matter, Chaplin? You look green. Do I? You don't have to be here. I didn't request it. I want to be here, Sean. Well, by the time you've been through a couple of dozen like Sergeant Kelly there, you'll be an old pro, won't he, Kelly? Oh, boy, I don't feel so hot myself. You're doing fine. This bit, this white shirt bit, it's required. Gotta look pretty. Gotta look pretty so those ghouls can see you die. Time, sir.
already, Warden. What about Judge Winkler? They're called by now. Can't wait any longer. Sergeant Kelly. Warden, it's Judge Winkler. Hello. Yes, I hear you. Stop! Get him out of there fast. Everybody out. Go. Will there be any after effects? This isn't an everyday occurrence, Frank. Judge Winkler denied the appeal. In the name of God, did he stop the execution? So he'd have time to consider the appeal. He considered the appeal, and he denied the appeal. I mean, he may have to go through this whole thing again. Some mail for you. Bring it to you after dinner. Damn. Ah. Calm down, Sherman. I'll have to put you in isolation. Don't you touch me? Sherman! Don't you want to touch Sherman, me? You've been commuting. Oh, you tear your heads off. Sherman, you've been commuted. I'm not going back to that slum Sherman, house. You don't have to. Your sentence has been commuted. The governor commuted your sentence. That's true. I just talked to him. He's commuted your sentence to life. I suffered cruel and unusual punishment. That's why. You still don't get it, do you, Judge? Avis, time. It's almost 9.15. Well, that gives you exactly 12 hours and 45 minutes. And then it's finished. Over. You get what I got. You die. Now, you just think about that, Judge. You just think about that. Hey, easy. You're not going to be one of those screamers, are you? You know, we had one guy up there. Skinny somebody, I don't, I don't even remember his name. A little run, maybe 5'2". Oh, man, what a mess. They had to drag him down that hall. He kicked every inch of the way. 
When they finally got him strapped down and locked in, he worked one arm loose. And by the time the gas hit, well, he was tearing around there like a madman. They said that witnesses were fainting all over the place. Kind of works on you, don't it, mister? Well, better men than you have flipped. I mean, I ought to know. I had it for over a year. If you change your mind about eating something, just let me know. They got Norm. They got the guy that busted out with me. you. It's inevitable. Okay. Maybe it's inevitable. But it won't be in time to save you. Tyler, use your head. Free me and you just go back. Kill me and it's the whole terrible thing all over again. I'd blow my brains out first. Look, mister, there's something you don't understand. I am alive for one reason for tonight. After that, I just don't care what happens. And her? She's not involved. She's up to her neck. She's an accessory, and you know it. They don't execute women. Not usually, but it happens. It could happen to her. Even if the court showed mercy, she'll go to prison. How do you like the idea of your wife spending the rest of her life in prison? She's here because she wants to be here. She's here because she loves you. And she doesn't deserve what you're doing to her. Well, now, all of a sudden, the judge is worried about you. Well, it's very touching. I mean, it kind of gets you right here, you know? I mean, if you believed it. You see, the judge forgets one thing, honey. He forgets that I've been where he is. And he forgets that I know a man will say anything to save his hide. Come on, go back to sleep, baby. If he says any more nice things about you, I'll wake you up. making that horn blow. Come on, you tell me you get this right in the belly. I have a phone in the car. When I'm not in it, the horn honks automatically every time the phone rings. They're trying to locate me. You see, you didn't have to tell me. You get the point, Your Honor? You hang on to every minute you can. Avis. Here. You take this. Come on. All you do is point and pull. Mrs. Tyler, open the door right now before it's too late. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in prison or die in the gas chamber? Think of yourself for once. I don't care about myself. And think of him. You heard his story. You heard his ordeal. Do you want him to go through that again? Do you? No. Well, he will. Every horrible second of it. Only this time he'll die. He's had his miracle. This time he'll die. I can't. I just can't go against Sherm. That isn't Sherm out there. He's a stranger, someone you don't even know. Well, it's not his fault. Of course it isn't. He's had an experience that would distort anyone's mind. Mrs. Tyler, 
I'm being absolutely honest. I'm afraid of him, terrified. But I pity him, too. He needs care. He needs help. I promise you, if you open this door, he'll get that help. All your education, your knowledge. Don't you see? If I open that door, you'd have to shoot him. He'd be dead anyway. Hey, the rain stopped. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Come on, sweetheart. Judge. Just for the record, I never meant to kill that clerk. I went in there to rob that liquor store, but I never meant to kill that clerk. Why bother to talk about it now? I couldn't believe it when I saw him pull out that club. I mean, he was looking down the barrel of a loaded 45. All I could think was, oh, you stupid slob, you stupid slob. And then the club hit me. And the gun went off. I don't remember anything. Not even pulling the trigger. I was sorry. Really sorry. I don't mean just for my own situation, but for him to murder. You're to murder again tomorrow, aren't you? No. Execute. Time, Judge. Put it on. Put it on. It's required. I said, put it on. I won't indulge your madness. You'll put it on, and you'll walk to that chair, and you'll cooperate in your own execution, Judge. If you're going to kill me, you'll have to do it right here. OK, I'll kill you right here. Then I'll go kill your wife. Then I'll go kill your daughter. Davis? I'll be right back. I need a couple of bags of air. You get your air in here. Sure, I can't watch it. A woman watched me. Just when I walked in, and before I sat down, I looked out. And there she was, staring at me in the eyes. If she did it, you can do it. He needs a witness, Avis. It's not official without a witness.
It's not the way to wear a shirt. We're gonna have a witness, and we're gonna have the shirt tucked in. All right, that's much better. You can leave your shoes on. I'm sorry I don't have a carpet. Up there, they actually have a carpet so your feet won't get cold. It's pretty weird. All right, Judge. We're all set. Tyler, I'd like to make a request. Well, what do you know? He finally broke down. I'd like to write my wife. Sure. Let him. No. Please, sure. Let him. All right, rub it in my face. I didn't write you. Rub it in my face. I told you. I understand, but if he wants to, doesn't everybody get the chance? All right. All right. Fast, huh? These things have to go off on time. Ten o'clock, whammo. Those cyanide pellets hit the acid. Thought you might want some paper. I thought, write to your wife. What can I say to her? She took pills after the trial, she almost died. I wanted to write you. You told me. Uh, it's just that see, he knows words, you know? And in my head, all the words that I wanted to say, they sounded phony. Do you understand me, baby? Yes, sir. Is... I know the address. You want to smoke? No. I know it's not like. Well, it's just. It's part of it, you see. You can have a cigarette if you want to. through a couple of dozen like Sergeant Kelly there, you'll be an old pro, won't he, Kelly? Oh, boy, I don't feel so hot myself. Sean. Sean. You'll have to be satisfied with this. They don't sell cyanide in the dime store. Twenty seconds. Well, aren't you going to say something? I'll listen to anything that you want to say for twenty seconds. What do you feel? Are you scared? There must be something. 
Seven seconds. Turn around, Avis. You're the witness. You gotta watch. Time. Take a deep breath. I did. I won't pull this trigger until you have to take another one. That'll be the gas. I said, take a deep breath. All right, you do what you want. It doesn't matter to me. Judge. It seems that I don't believe in capital punishment. <laughs> On time, Mavis. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This honorable branch of the criminal court of Lucas County is now in session. Judge Howard R. Stimming presiding. The prisoner will rise. The jury, having found you guilty of murder in the first degree, it is the judgment and sentence of this court that for the aforesaid crime, you, Carl Hickson, be delivered to the warden of Bloomdale Prison. And at the hour of 10 a.m. on the day of November 30, be by him executed and put to death by the administration of lethal gas as prescribed by the laws of this state. May God have mercy. <laughs> 